OK, what comes in a pizza box and is as much fun as you can have with your clothes on? Ta-da! Yep, it's the UMX Ultrix. This little guy is absolutely incredible, as you will see, and this video is to explain how non-spectrum transmitter users like myself can set up a Tyrannus using a 4-in-1 module to configure it. You'll notice that it is not sporting its original propellers, and at the end of this video, you'll find out why. Before we move on, just a shout out to Jose up there in RC Madrid, who is the Horizon Hobby distributor in Spain. And I'll put a link to his website down below if you happen to be ordering in this part of the world. Moving on then. To start with in the instructions, we have the transmitter set up. Clearly this is designed around the Spectrum radio. But I'm going to be using my Tyrannus with the 4-in-1 iRange X module. If you're not clear on how to set that up, then I have another video that I've done on that process. That's going to be our link then to the Spectrum receiver in the Ultrix. Just before we go much further, the centre of gravity is 175 millimetres back from the nose. And I put these little dots on the, on the nacelles to indicate where that is. They're about five millimetres forward of the little hole that's in the nacelle there. To keep my battery in place, I've just cut a piece of foam which push fits in there and stops the battery sliding back. The batteries that I'm using are these 800 milliamp hour tattoo batteries and I'll put a link in the description to those. The recommended cell is only 500 milliamp hours, so this should give us a little extra bit of time and it balances perfectly with it all the way forward in the bay there. Now with my fingers underneath the points on the nacelles it's balancing just about perfectly. I've done the basic setup on the transmitter. Let's now try and bind it and see how we get on. The binding procedure again as described here is directed at Spectrum users. I'm going to try the same procedure. So start with the transmitter off and connect the flight battery. We now have a rapidly blinking blue light. Transmitter throttle at zero. And press the bind button. OK. It looks like we're bound now. The solid red light then means that it is in its AS3X mode and I would prefer to have it in safe mode when it powers up. If I switch it now in the opposite way, it goes blue solid which means it's in its safe mode. Let's now just reset it. So now it is in the safe mode, as you can see, and you can tell it's extremely sensitive. As I roll it, the elevons correct, and in this mode you have only a little amount of control over the control surfaces, obviously to keep you safe. If we then flip it into AS3X mode, this is still with rates on, at uh, rates in the, at the medium level. So if I leave it there and then switch it into high, you can see that there's an additional amount of movement. Excellent. And finally, uh, throttle up. Almost ready to go now. There are some other things I need to set up on the transmitter and I'll walk you through that in the next part. I've added all the bells and whistles I can think of to my Tyrannus now. Being a novice pilot, I'm very keen on the voice prompts, so there's plenty of those, so I don't have to look down at the screen and lose sight of my model. Throttle disabled. Safe mode. As you can hear, I've put a... Throttle disabled. Throttle active. Throttle disabled. Control on the throttle there, and the different modes are announced as well. When it started up, you heard safe mode. AS3X med. So the medium rates and AS3X. AS3X high. 
Safe mode. Also for the safe mode, it doesn't announce it, but I've put it on an emergency switch here. Even if I'm in either of the ASX modes, I can just switch this and it'll flip it into safe momentarily and hopefully recover the model. It's not bound to the model at the moment. I have telemetry coming from the model, which will give us the battery voltage. And I've set a low battery alarm at 3.8 volts that will announce the, the battery voltage. One thing to check from the beginning is that there are different versions of the iRange X module and indeed different firmwares. I always like to update the firmware to the latest version so that I can take advantage of all the, the new models that are being added all the time. This is important because different firmwares have different channel arrangements. Let's just check that now. Go menu and first page. Go down to the bottom. Here we can see the DSM module configuration. Important to have that at 11 milliseconds. The version of the firmware that I'm using and most important AETR. The channel order for the iRange X module is aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder. For the rest of the configuration we'll flip over to the laptop and take a look at it in the OpenTX companion. Here we are then in the OpenTX companion. In the setup not really much to do. Give it a name, tell it that we're using the multi-protocol module in DSM mode with the 11 milliseconds and the internal radio is off. In the flight modes, flight mode 0 is the safe mode. Flight mode 1 is the AS3X uh, medium range or mid range with switch SE in the mid position and flight mode 2 with the SE switch down is the high rates. Inputs, the rates here are those recommended in the manual for both the rates and uh, exponential. In the mixes then remember the channel order that's defined by the multi-protocol module, so aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder. I've also got channel 5 here which is the switch that controls the safe mode. Outputs, channel 1 which is aileron is inverted, channel 4 which is the rudder is inverted. I also inverted switch 5 so that it starts up in safe mode. Logical switches then we take the telemetry value from location A2 and we compare that against the low which I've put in now at 3.3 volts. I had it set before at 3.8 and it was continually alarming. That was mainly due to the throttle activity and it was much too sensitive. I need to do some fine tuning on that and compare it against the low voltage indicator which is the motors pulsing on the, on the craft. I'll keep an eye on that. Special functions then, this is a whole ball of fun. On switch SG I play the value from the telemetry from the voltage received. That's just so that I can check it before the alarm goes off. It's also in the top of the display but sometimes you can't look at the display but you can flick this switch and it will tell you what the voltage is. Here are my overrides for the throttle and it will play the throttle disabled and throttle active once SD is in the fully down position. As I mentioned also I have an override on channel 5 and that's the switch SH which is the momentary switch and that will momentarily engage safe mode uh, or panic mode if you like. The SE switch as we saw is the selection of safe mode or AS3X, and we've got the files Safe here. Safe mode, AS3X med, AS3X high. This special function here will play and repeat every two seconds the voltage once it goes below the 3.3 volts set. And finally, looking in the telemetry, the voltage source is, as we saw, A2. You can see that value in the top bar of the display next to the transmitter battery voltage. And that's all there is to it. Let's go fly. As you can no doubt hear, it's an awful lot windier than I would like to fly this little guy. He only weighs in at 77 grams. But they do say it can uh, withstand the wind. So I'm just going to wait now for a lull 
the suggested launch mode in the manual is with the thumb over the top here and give it a gentle toss. I think I can manage that. Four minutes. And she's away. A little bit twitchy, that's really just me. Let's back off on the throttle before we lose it in the mountain. See the wind is buffeting it around a lot, and we're still in the safe mode, so what could possibly go wrong? As they say, it does handle some wind. Two minutes. Yeah, it's quite exciting. So my my timer, I think, it was set to four minutes on a one minute countdown now. It still seems to be zipping along very well indeed. It certainly zips along. This is an awful lot of fun. Lost her in the sun there for a moment. Ugh, in the dust again. Trying to get a low pass at the camera. Failing. That was closer on the prop there. Some dust. 3.8 volts indicated. Let's try again. Well, if I can fly this, then I guess anybody can. This is an awful lot of fun. I thoroughly recommend one. I'm getting some amazing flight time on this. I wonder if my voltage alarm is actually working. No way I can take my eyes off this to look right now. Three point seven. Still saying three point seven. Well I think I'll call it a day on that battery. Ah, I've bent the propeller there to straighten that out. You see that? Unfortunately, when trying to bend the propeller back, it broke off. If there's any downside to this little guy, then it is the propellers. They are very fragile, and I'm going to be replacing it with some gem fan alternatives, which are a bit more bendy. That'll be a wrap for this video. I'll make a follow-up video where I'll show how to change the propeller over, fly it in safe mode once again, and then Brave taking it out of safe mode, and we'll see what other tricks it can do.